Do you know what a dream is? For example, adults may dream of a big house or a new car. And children often dream of an ordinary miracle. I was a little girl once, and I also loved dreaming. Let me tell you about my first real dream. This story starts with the moment I first saw an amazing and strange object that I had never seen before on my dad's desk. My dad often left his things lying around, but for some reason this object immediately caught my eye. I knew that I should not enter Dad's study without permission, but there were so many interesting things there. I used to wait for my dad to leave for work and my mom to go to the kitchen. Then I'd quietly open the door. That day, I once again was walking around the study and exploring various objects. You may not believe me, but I always found something new. The room was not big, but very cozy. My dad used to read a lot so a large bookcase took up almost the entire study. At that age, I could count to 20, but I never could count all the books. Usually, I stopped counting when I reached a big book with a red cover. In the corner of the room, on the floor, there was a tall clock. And on the wall, there was a map and framed photos. My dad and mom were very young and always smiled in these pictures. In one photo, I even recognized myself. My parents were holding me in their arms. I was very small and had a pacifier in my mouth. Opposite the window, there was a small table with a leather armchair beside it. It was the table where I saw that mysterious object. It was glowing with colorful designs and looked like a garden snail's house. I realized that I had already seen it in a book about sea creatures. Mom often read it to me before bed. So I ran quietly to my room and brought that book to my dad's study. The book was about big whales and very smart dolphins. And what is more, it was about seashells. I opened the book to a page with a snail picture and compared it with the object on the table. They looked very much alike. My mom said that if you put such a shell close to your ear, you can hear the sound of the sea waves. I carefully took the shell from Dad's table and put it close to my ear. It really sounded like the sea. At that moment, I closed my eyes and started to dream. I imagined the clear blue sky and the hot sun. The seagulls were flying high in the sky and calling loudly. The waves were crashing onto the beach one after another and spreading through the yellow sand. 
I was running along the shore and smiling. And at that moment, my mom entered the room. She realized that I was startled, looked at the seashell in my hands and gave a long laugh. Mom said that she had long been aware of my secret visits to my dad's study. I told her about my dream. I said that I wanted to go to the sea very much and that I had already heard how it sounded inside the seashell. Mom listened to me, then took the shell in her hand and put it close to her ear. She heard the sea sounds too. She hugged me tightly and advised me to keep dreaming and my dream was sure to come true. At that moment, my life changed. After that, I thought about the sea every day. More and more often, I worked on my favorite puzzle with a mermaid and asked my parents to turn on the cartoons only about sea creatures. When my parents gave me a sketch pad and watercolors, I always painted sand, waves, and a ship. In kindergarten, I made various seashells from modeling clay. And before bed, I pictured myself running along the beach. Mom and Dad enjoyed my dream. And I loved dreaming. And one day, at breakfast, my parents announced that we were going to the sea. Dad said that he had worked hard that year and earned a holiday. My happiness had no limits. I even dropped my pancake and spilled milk on the table. When? Where? What should I do? Dad smiled and said that first I had to have breakfast. Then go upstairs to my room and choose the things I would take on the trip. But I couldn't bring too many things because the trunk of the car was almost full. I ate my breakfast quickly and ran at full speed to my room. Mom said that it was usually very hot on the coast. So first, I put on my swimsuit. Then I opened my backpack and started to put my toys into it. First, I put in a yellow rubber duck I used to play with in the bathtub. Then a brightly colored beach ball and a small ship. And on the ship, I put several sand molds and a shovel. I managed even to tuck a small notebook and a red pencil into the side pocket. I loved drawing and hoped that I would have a chance to draw something during the trip to the sea. At last, my backpack was full and I went downstairs to the living room. My parents were running around the kitchen, fussing about and speaking loudly. It seemed to me that they were trying to put all the things we had in the house into two rather small bags. Dad was angry because there was nowhere to put his fishing tackle. And Mom was upset because she couldn't take five swimsuits. These are adults. But pretty soon the bags were full. We left the house together and got into Dad's blue car. Mom turned to me and smiled. 
She could tell that I was excited because my dream was about to come true. The weather was perfect and we started our trip. I looked at my street from the car window. The neighbor's dog saw me, ran into the road and started barking loudly and I waved back at it. Then we drove past my kindergarten, passing several cars, and moved away from the city. Dad said that it would take us at least four hours to get to the sea, so he put some music on. I sat in the car seat, looking out of the window. What could I do during that long trip? I took a notebook and a pencil out of my backpack and started drawing. I decided to draw a beautiful green forest that I saw out of the car window. But the car was moving so fast that I could hardly see what kind of trees there were in the forest. A pine tree, an oak tree, a fir tree. Soon my eyes started to close and I fell asleep. I had a wonderful dream where I was the captain of a big sailing ship. Together with a crew of brave ant sailors, I was floating towards a mysterious treasure island. And before my eyes, I had a map with a marked place where a treasure was buried. The ants ran around the deck, spreading the sails, and I was monitoring the route. By my reckoning, our trip wouldn't last long. Suddenly, a seagull flew over the mast of the ship. Any sailor would tell you that if you see a bird on the high seas, you are near the land. I took a spyglass and scanned the horizon. <gasps> Hooray! I saw land in the east. I gave a full speed ahead command and began to prepare for our arrival. The ants started to run faster around the deck. But suddenly, I felt a small nudge and woke up. It was my mom who had woken me up. She said that we had already got to the sea and could get out of the car. Indeed, the air smelled like salt seawater. I turned my head slowly and saw the sea through the window. <gasps> How large it was! We got out of the car and, hand in hand, went to the beach. Then Mom hugged me and said, Congratulations! because my dream had come true at last. We held hands tightly and ran quickly towards the crashing waves. It seems to me that it was the happiest day of my childhood. I ask you never to stop dreaming. If you have a dream, Keep it safe. Then you will surely meet something amazing on your way. And now, close your eyes and dream about something. Have a good sleep.